Hi everyone, this is Maha Bailey from the American University in Cairo and uh, one of the facilitators of Equity Unbound. And with me today is Mia Zamora. Hi there everyone. I'm at Kane University in New Jersey and Maha and I will be speaking about a protocol um, that we call Studio Visits, which we think really opens up um, and welcomes people into the learning process. Maha, so you what wanna... got you started? Yeah, what got you started in? So, I think you started it and then I started being involved. So. Yeah, actually, I think the terminology came from um, something that we were doing, both Alan Levine and I, in a class called Network Narratives. But in essence, we were inviting, um, you know, well-known practitioners, artists, or scholars into our classroom to just share their perspective on the work that we were interested in in the class. I think there's some really important hallmarks to a studio visit. Um, first of all, the term itself makes it seem like someone's at home um, in practice in some way. When you think of an artist studio, you think of a place that is sort of a place they um, envelop their creative, they're enveloped in their creative process when they're in their studio. And of course, we're using that like terminology, terminology loosely. Um, and, but what we were trying to emphasize is that we're catching people um, thinking about their practice and rather informally rather than um, something that's sort of structured and um, and formal and so um, what what we love about these kinds of engagements is it's less an interview less scripted and much more intuitive um, and it opens up the possibility of students to ask um, more um, genuine questions, um, ones that come off the top of their head rather than, um, you know, the kinds of um, preparation that might go into with deep research, etc. So, and I'm guessing also the, the guest or guests who come are not also like guest lecturing. They're no here lecturing. Yeah. <laughs> it's about asking questions. Yes. Um, I remember some of the early studio visits that we had. Um, sometimes we would catch people um, when they were walking across campus, and so they would be holding their phone and pointing out things in the background, and you know, and there was a, a real feeling of this is my real life, and these are the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis, etc. And then the conversation would flow from that place, place of authenticity. Um, and so that's what the studio visit is. It's basically um, connecting up with someone that you are very interested in, in terms of the work that you're discussing, mm -hmm. but doing it in an informal and open way. Right. And neither you nor I, I think, require students to come to these, but sometimes we report them and students can watch them later if they want to come in. And there are certain students who used to like coming to them, I think. Yeah, there are certain uh, students that love to go to the studio visit. And um, sometimes we had sign-ups because we knew maybe if the um, asynchronous time, like the time that was outside of our class time didn't work for a student, then in essence, um, you know, it's hit or miss whether it would fit into a student's schedule, but we would have sign-up just so if they could make it and wanted to be there, that they mm -hmm. could. Right. And, and so we sometimes, recorded. yeah, and we usually recorded these. So we'll, mm -hmm. we'll have a links to examples on, from the Equity Unbound site uh, that folks can watch. And you'll see that some of them had more educators joining in uh, the sessions than students. That happens sometimes. There were also a couple of them that I think were really, really successful, but they were unrecorded. So I'm just going to give a couple of examples of those because people can't see them. Um, there was one with um, Sabasaheli Singh who did these videos about screening surveillance. And because of the topic of surveillance and the kinds of things that students might have asked in that session, we decided not to record it. We actually had students from several different countries. So it's, it's, you can do it for your own class, obviously, just you, you and your students. But there's also the advantage of if you're doing it online anyway, uh, and nowadays a lot of people are online anyway, is that you can invite anyone in the world if they want to join in, right? So we had uh, participants from here, we have participants from the US, um, and students were talking to Saba, and it was, this one I think, because it was unrecorded, because of the kind of person she is, so it helps if you, the teacher, has a good relationship with the person, and you know that they're friendly and that they're easygoing with students. Um, so even though the topic is really serious, really, I would say, you know, black, you know, dark, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but together, they actually had a great time, and my students were not required to come, they were some of them were coming for one, but then we had a second session with her and some students came again because they enjoyed it so much. And this was before mm. COVID, before everyone was online. So they didn't really have to do that. It was like 
9 or 10 p.m. their time and they stayed up for it. Mm -hmm. The other one that we didn't record was the well-being conversation we had, and we didn't have a guest speaker for that. It was mm -hmm. actually three educators with some of their students. Um, I think students appreciated just being with people from different countries. Yeah, that's um, right. Experiencing yeah. something similar. In, in that case, I think um, the, the topic, as Maha just said, was well-being. And I think what happened is that people converged together to talk about their perspectives on this unfolding of something unprecedented and certainly not foreseen, right? Um, but getting those perspectives from across the globe was really, um, I think, nourishing in a way because it, it, it made us all understand that there's some there are some things that don't change no matter where you are but then there's also distinctions that are very meaningful as well so the conversation was um, I think a cross and intercultural one in some sense um, as we all struggle through something we never imagined would be unfolding the other thought I had about this also that I think might be helpful for people to just sort of conceptualize is conceptualize this is that um, in a in a face-to-face -face campus situation you tend to find things like support groups or or just like conversations that you can join or a panel discussion that you can join on campus or things like that uh, like third third places they're not part of your classroom but they're in on campus that you can join but with everyone being online those things don't necessarily happen so you have to kind of create those spaces yeah, um, and because you're going to do them online anyway, there's the extra value of doing it in an intercultural way. I guess yeah. it helps if the educators on the different sides know each other, so that it's so that they can sort of collaborate on the process and sort of know their students and know how to uh, involve their own students and, uh, and so on. One last comment I'll make is that I've noticed in studio visits, especially when there are students involved, that there's some sort of thrill and joy that comes from being able to see the surroundings of um, people far away. So um, just sometimes taking the screen close to a window and sharing the perspective in that locale becomes um, fascinating and also empowering for the, for the people on the other end. Um, who are receiving that sharing in a way. So there's something intimate about studio visits that sort of opens up the possibility yeah. of understanding what you don't, like things that aren't familiar to you or not as close to you in some right. way. So Which I always felt like, I always felt like when people use virtual backgrounds a little bit too much, they take away from that. It's fun, yeah. but it takes yeah. away from that. But then at the same time, you sort of understand, well, maybe they don't have a beautiful background behind them. Show yeah, and sure. Comfortable. Yeah. Um, and obviously, what happens a lot with my students is that their connectivity might not be great every time, so they don't even turn on their cameras. Yes. Uh, but I realize that they appreciate yeah. being able to participate in the text chat, and that's also an important thing to, mm -hmm. to suggest is that students could be intimidated by a guest who's a high-profile person. They may mm -hmm. not even realize how high-profile the person is. Actually, it's just like <laughs> someone they don't know who's too. a stranger. Yeah. Uh, sometimes students will speak a little bit more because they want to be welcoming and hospitable to the stranger. Sometimes they're a bit shy. Um, sometimes it helps to privately message them and ask them, hey, do you have a question? Or the ones that you know are mm -hmm. likely to speak up. But then encouraging them to use the chat. And if they're not comfortable speaking up, just reading out what they say in the chat helps. And then when they realize that the guest or you are appreciating the comments they're saying in the chat and you bring them to the conversation, Mm -hmm. um, that can be great. And also you can equally have two parallel conversations, one on the chat and one uh, on voice, and, and that works just as well. Yeah, I think that's often happening is that there's two channels of dialogue and conversation in the chat and then in the, in the screen, they're uh, uh, in the lens as well. Um, and, that, and in a way they're connected and they're enriched um, in some ways back and forth. But Yes, studio visits. They're a great practice. <laughs> Give it a try. Let us know yep. if you want more details. <laughs>